Okay, in this video I'm going to take a look at uh, an example outlined in Chapter 4 of Econometrics to Introduction to Econometrics with R. And I'll just follow the link here that I've left, the hyperlink. I'll go into um, Google and just paste and run. And the textbook is, just to take a quick look, Christoph Hank, Martin Arnold, Alexander Gerber, and Martin Schelzer. Okay, so a uh, little look at the preface then. Uh, introduction to Econometrics with R. And they said to develop a little bit uh, applications in R um, to statistical programming. And in particular, uh, Instead of confronting students with pure coding exercises and complementary classic literature, like the book by Venables and Smith, 2010, we figure it would be better to provide interactive learning materials that blends our code with the contents of the well-received textbook, Econometrics, Introduction to Econometrics by Stock and Watson. So, uh, basically, to take much of the material from Stock and Watson, the approach and the outline as developed in Stock and Watson, and then use R to address a number of the text examples. So in this instance, we're going to use, we're going to work with chapter four, and we're going to look at an application of linear regression uh, to in R with an example, with a simplified example. So our starting point here is to look a little bit at the uh, the program that's provided. So I've followed basically what I've done here is I've taken sample code provided in the textbook by the four authors and uh, we run a little bit of the code and we will pull out uh, the sum of the square residuals, the so total sum of squares and explain sum of squares estimate r squared estimate um some t statistics and just do a very basic introduction but in addition i will also with this limited number of uh, observations here i'll set out some of the tasks in excel just purely to make it a little bit more transparent okay so what i've done here is i've also taken this data we have students uh, the idea here is we have a student teacher ratio and test scores and we relate each of these arrays to each other so obviously uh, we're trying to explain if you like uh, the test score uh, the performance of students and then we examine that in relationship to student teacher ratio one might expect that as the student teacher ratio increases that there may be a reduction in the test score uh, the more students there are relative to teaching to the teaching resource the more stretched that teacher becomes and uh, one might expect it mightn't be completely linear mightn't be completely um, absolutely neat. every instance we find this but as the number of students grows relative to the number of teachers to a single teacher then the performance in terms of test scores might uh, diminish. Okay, so, uh, okay, we'll just go into Excel, take the data that I have here, right, and perform the estimation. Now, Excel uh, provides built-in techniques for running uh, ordinary squares, uh, we'll look at two here, so I'm going to just take these two initially. These are the figures that are available in the R code. And again, so we'll just take a look. Uh, so I'm in Chapter 4 of Introduction to Econometrics with R. And I'll go to the relevant section, Outlining. Okay, so what we have here is this sample data 
very limited number of observations, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And uh, we take this data and we set it up in Excel, which I have here. And then I can copy that. And if you like, this is a manual estimation of the uh, different numbers. But if, if we, for the sake of argument, we had uh, test scores relative to student teacher ratio, right? Uh, what we might say is the causal variable here, the independent variable is the student teacher ratio that's causing the test scores. So the test scores is an outcome. We're trying to explain that outcome and we're explaining in terms of what's happening here with the student teacher ratio. In Excel to run a regression, uh, we can go into our data and then come over. Now, if we don't have this uh, statistical analysis here, we can then go into um, options and then look for trust center add-ins, should I say, and look for the analysis tool pack, analysis tool pack and go. And we load that in analysis tool pack. Okay, and it appears here. So we have our data analysis. And to run a regression here, we just data analysis and then we look for regression. And we have regression and we click OK. And then we've importantly, we, we have to outline the dependent variable, which is the test scores. And we can include the labels that actually might be useful. And we can include the label and the data for the X's. And make sure if you include the labels, we tick labels here. And then the output, we'll put the output in an existing, in the existing worksheet. Okay, and can, I think that's good to run. So let's just run that and observe our output here. And what we find taking a broader perspective is that the we get a range of interesting figures we get an r squared which is overall goodness of fit it's 31 percent and then the coefficient on the student ratio this uh, teacher student teacher ratio is negative 2.96 and the intercept is 7.13 so uh, what we're trying to estimate here is we have a y and we're saying it's equal to some intercept a plus b times multiplied by x, where x is the causal variable. In this instance, y is the student, is the test score. So the test score, we're trying to explain test score, we're trying to explain in relationship to an intercept plus beta times beta times multiplied by the student teacher ratio okay so the explanatory variable here is our student teacher ratio right and our uh, dependent variable is the test score it's the performance of the student okay so that's these are the and we're estimating A and B. A and B, this is, if you like, A, the intercept, and B is the sensitivity, right? So our overall relationship here would be that the test score, let's just copy. Our test score, if we were to model this, the idea of running an ordinary least square regression, right? If we're running an OLS regression, in effect, what we're trying to do is we're trying to model. We're trying to build a model. And the model that we've built, this relatively parsimonious relationship, says that the test score would be equal to, so would be equal to, we can copy the number that we have here, and um, the intercept, should I say, would be equal to roughly, let's just copy, copy, would be equal to a 
where a is equal to 713.56 and we'll round up to 57 and the sensitivity measure the coefficient the beta coefficient here we can replace with negative it should be negative 2.96 or 97 when we we round up okay so if we go back into this relationship again okay we will put paste and 2.9 just rounding up 7 now importantly it is a negative value okay so we've got to note that that it is this is a negative value in other words the uh, higher the student teacher ratio the more reduced the test score should become so if we increase the student teacher ratio then the value of the test score should fall according to the model that we've just developed here uh, also things that we might pay attention to we've mentioned already the r squared the maximum r squared is one or 100 percent we're 0 0.31 uh, it's not that high it's actually relatively low uh, secondly are the values that we have here statistically different from zero and uh, normally uh, to uh, determine if these are statistically significant values are the non-zero values we look at uh, the t-stat and if the t-stat is higher than two then typically uh, we can be relatively uh, positive that the values are statistically different from zero in this instance we find that whereas the intercept would appear to be statistically significant it's much greater than two the value the coefficient on the student teacher ratio is not quite as con compelling it's less than two it's 1.5 it's negative which doesn't make any difference but it is 1.5 which is less than two and the p-value is less than 0 0.05 it's closer to 0 0.2 here and uh, at first glance that would suggest we are not completely uh, guaranteed here that it's not statistically different from zero this coefficient could be zero could be a value other than um, could be a value a range of values that includes zero and that's at a five percent level of confidence okay so we're not confident that this uh, coefficient is statistically different from zero but th this this is the value that we have okay so uh, another way of doing this in excel is to use linest we might just uh, try that but before we do uh, we'll just put here on the he header the, the tab header uh, data analysis and in the next video clip uh, we'll use uh, linest okay so before we do that let's just uh, go into R and just see can we replicate the results that we had obtained here in R and okay uh, we load in our data not into the load, uh, not in uh, making reference to a file but just by making reference to this array using C okay and we run the test scores and then we can output the test scores print them out the student teacher ratio and the test scores we can plot we can look at our values we run the linear regression model and then we output the linear regression model and get the summary and then just copy this copy very quickly and then go back into excel and then we can paste in our results let's just broaden our perspective let's paste our results paste and we can do a quick check to see are the results consistent and we can see that they are the intercept here 713 same as here 713 the coefficient on the uh, student teacher ratio is negative 296 so we get the same results and the r squared here 3132 3132 318 so the results are broadly are the same Right. the results here we obtain are the same 
when comparing to R. In the next videos, we'll demonstrate the same results using Linest in Excel.